This is Fred Beck from Fred Talks Fighting. Today I'm very lucky to joined by CJ Challenger. So thank you very much for coming on, CJ. It's good to see you, mate. Good to see you too, my man. So how have things been with you, CJ? How's the training going then? Things are things are going okay right now, man. You know, I'm just I'm just um taking day by day, getting better and better. So yeah, bigger pictures coming. Yeah, very soon. So we just touched on your last fight. Obviously, you've been out of the ring for two years and you're just last yeah. At the end of July, how was that time kind of been for you? That two years beforehand was it frustrating at all? Then, um, the two years, there's not a way that I could summarize it, yeah, because it was such a roller coaster. Like at first, it was at first I I hated everything. Like I I wanted things. I'm the type of guy I wanted things done yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So I, like the 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 little layout that wasn't any fault of my own, by the way, because I was always in the gym. I was always getting better. Um, it was mad frustrating, mad, mad frustrating. Um, over time, you know, everything happens for a reason. I kind of got around the mindset um, and I just used it to the best of my ability and turn, turn lemons into lemonade, so. Yeah, I guess so. Do you ever kind of lose motivation to all them? Nah, not once. Um, because... Like I said, like, I, I think I, I was, because I was very, because um, I want, because I wanted things done straight away. I was always working towards something. And then when I started to get my head around the whole mentality of the bigger picture, um, that's my motivation. So nothing, no, no plan, no, nothing has changed, but I'm always working to get better and you can always get better. So. Yeah, I see what you mean there. So it was touching on the last fight against Jordan Granham. It must have felt good back in the ring then after that two years. Can you kind of? Oh, let... bro, it felt amazing. You know, like even just even just the whole process, everything leading up to the fight was um, was like I just felt good, man. Then getting in the ring, like like as normal. I don't really I don't really hear people when I'm in the ring and it's and that the other. So, but after the fight. As soon as the last the, the last bell went and I turned around and I had all my peoples and and my people would come with a lot of noise. Um and they're very vocal. So when I turned around and I actually realized how many people was there and just the whole environment of just being back in the ring and it was amazing, man. Yeah, it must have been. Apparently you got the loudest roar in the crowd then. Yeah, that's it, man. That's what I'm saying. It's just credit, it's credit to the to the people them. People that come and watch you every time you're out. And you win the six rounds, which I think is quite a good thing. Because if you kind of lost, they're putting out one or two rounds and you wouldn't have got the ring time, which you kind of... Yeah, like, yeah, I think that that was the, the conversation that me and my coach George had before. Like, you you don't want someone that you're going to blow out. It, yes, it, it's always going to be great to get in there after a two-year layout, blow someone out of the water. But ideally, just again, going back to the bigger picture... You, you need ring time, you know what I'm saying? Also, like, I can't can't forget, I've not, I didn't have a vast amateur experience, so every minute in the ring is valuable to me, do you know what I'm saying? So every minute I have I have under the lights, it's just, it's just, um, it's, t it's growth from me. Yeah, it must be very important. Basically, how much amateur experience did you have then? How many bouts as an amateur? I think I had 30 amateur bouts. Okay, that's not too bad then. That's still quite a few. Yeah, I've had, I had a couple, but then, like around the time when there was kids that that around the, in the amateur scene at the same time as me. Yeah, yeah, you're talking like north of 70, 80 fights. You know what I'm saying? I'd only I'd only been boxing four or five years before I turned pro. Anyway, so like like from starting boxing, where you've got where you've got most people that started boxing when. It was nine, ten, you know what I'm saying? Granted, I did kickboxing, but it's a completely different sport, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see kickboxing. I mean, kickboxers are more kind of brawlers. That's what I've always... Yeah, like, lit yeah, yeah, literally, when when you watch, I think you can, like, majority of the time when you see a kickboxer cross over to boxing, you can tell the, what, where they've gone from. One person that's done it great is Brad Foster. Oh, yeah? He's made a great, he's made a he great change. Yeah, man. 
Is that something you'll be aiming for? So obviously you're 11 and 0, you've got the English titles, British titles. We can, I guess we'll be aiming for the English first then. I'm, I'm aiming for any, any, any title that comes in my path and that, that makes sense for me, that's what I'm going for. Like at the, at the end of the day, it's just, it's just about me. My career is just about me. So I don't really, if one route makes more sense than the other, then, then, that's, then that's the route I'll take. I'm not, I'm not doing this for, for no one else's benefit. I don't, well, if someone else thinks, oh, I think that would be better, then I sit down and think, actually, you know what, that might be better than I go that route. But until that time, we just, we just keep going what, step by step, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's probably the best way to look at it. I saw a video of you on the, it was on the Black Flash Boxing Promotions uh, YouTube channel that you met with Pat Barrett. Is Pat Barrett something you're going to be working with in the future? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, me and Pat me and Pat are going to start, oh, going to be working together. Well, Pat's going to um, be managing my career. Um, it's definitely something I'm excited about. It's great, like, especially when I, I don't meet a lot of people that I get the, the, the same vibe of. So... I have a very close relationship with my coach and I get the same kind of like interest and passion. Like, so when Pat talks to me about my career, I can tell he's, he's interested in it. He's, he's passionate he's about it. He's you know and he wants, he wants to put work in. He wants to get things moving, which is great because you know, as, as, as you're building a team, what more can you ask for apart from people that are, that are on the same wavelength as you? Yeah, so you mean you don't really want tag along, you want people who are invested in the career and kind of that's it. well rather than just them to get a bit out of your career. I see that's, yeah, that's it. Especially as a prospect as well. All right, CJ, I don't need too much of time. So thanks so much for so much of your time today. So thanks, Fred. find you on uh, social media at right? Instagram and Twitter. Uh at CJ Challenger, just straight across the board, at CJ Challenger, you'll find me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go look for me, follow me, or I'll follow back. Awesome, I'll put the Instagram link in the description then. All right, CJ, until next time. Thanks, Nice one, Fred.